guys, Joe here. How you doing? I'm up teaching a course for my school, Northgate Bushcraft. We're at our North Bay location, and I'm going to. Everybody's building their shelters right now, and I'm going to build a snow cave. And I thought that I'd take you along with this part of it. I'm not going to make a video for the full course. I just can't do that. But for this little part, I can make it make a video. So what I'm going to do is definitely. What I'm going to do is shovel down into the snow. We got about a good four feet, three feet of snow here. Um, and make a trench. So I'm going to make a rectangle and I'm going to make an entrance way into it. I'm going to lay branches on top and then cover it with snow. I'm using my uh, aluminum MSR collapsible shovel, or telescopic I guess. Goes down that small to pack it away on your sled. And uh, you get a decent sized shovel. So I picked this location because it's the flattest spot I found in the area with the deepest snow. We have a big open sky above us, other than this tree here. And the snow is very crusty and hard. It got down to like negative 18 last night, so it's pretty crusty. I'm able to get the snowshoes off now because I'm down here. I can I can probably walk on top of this because it's crusty. Later on in the day, once it warms up, it won't be won't be able to. But now I'm down here. I'm at the ground now, so it's up to my thigh. I'd say two and a half feet, three feet, easy. So I've been pretty lucky because I haven't come across too many logs and stuff on the ground. Like as you can imagine, you don't know what's under the snow. There could be down tree. There could be a tree this big under here. I would have no idea. And if that's the case, I either have to saw it up, which would be tight quarters, or move because it'd be right in the middle of my shelter. So I'm doing lucky so far. I've got two and a half feet done this way. I gotta go quite a ways long still. But now that I'm down in here, it's easier. I can just kind of cut it out, toss it out, and keep it up. Oh, and there's the log. Not too big. I can definitely cut it. So it's just a small branch. I gotta get rid of it. I try, I try going back as far as I can, but I have to come this way now. I don't want it to leave sharp edges because my sleeping bag and my sleeping pad are gonna be down in here. So I gotta clean it up pretty good. There we go. A lot of these briar and raspberry bush under here too. Warming up. It's warming up weather wise and I'm warming up body heat wise from digging this thing. I'm almost done. I've got it as long as I need it to be. I'm just creating like a like an entrance that I'm not going to cover up. I'm not making this for any other reason than I just haven't made one before. And I'm going to spend the night in it because all the students are making a natural shelter and spending the night in it. And I want to too. <laughs> so that's the gist of how big it is. There's where I step in. Got a gradual step. This is like docking area. <laughs> and then into the sleep quarters proper right there. Gotta go get some spruce boughs to line the bottom. So I spent last night in this wiki up. That, that was a group build from the students and it was super comfortable. And I really enjoyed it. Something about sleeping in a natural shelter, like a round natural shelter was really, really appealing to me. Nobody's gonna sleep in it tonight though, so I'm gonna strip it, cannibalize it of its boughs. I'm taking bows from it. <laughs> Should be good. So my camping gear in there, my sleeping gear. How well you can see it. There you go. So I have um, a grabber blanket, thermal rest, Neo Air, and two sleeping bags. So 
I'm only, <clears throat> I'm only using the small ones, small tips of the spruce uh, boughs for my bed, because I don't want no, this is even almost too big, this big uh, jagged one. So all I'm doing is snapping them off and using the finer soft tips for my bed. I don't really need to worry about um, layering them on like in the feather bone pattern, herring bone pattern, um, because I am going to use a, a sleeping pad as well. So I'm not too worried about it. You definitely could just use these, but I have my sleeping pad, I'm using it. <laughs> so you can see I've lined it with my bows. And it's actually quite comfortable. And this is my view. Clear sky, spruce tops, a little jack pine there. Somebody's sneaking up on me. Who goes there? <laughs> Next stage in the shelter building process is I need to get myself a substantially um, big in diameter piece of wood, a uh, dead tree that I'm gonna find and cut down. And then I'm gonna lay it across the top of my shelter and I'm just gonna put boughs, a bunch of boughs on top. I, I thought about it and I don't need an extra foot of snow on top of me. I was planning on putting the tarp down and staking it down and putting snow on top of it. I just don't need it. The boughs will be more than sufficient. So, and I have the boughs to use from the wiki up. So off to find a tree to cut down. This tree's perfect. It's dead. I think it might even be the top of a tree that fell off and stuck into the snow. I'm gonna get one more like that, I think, just to be safe. Then we'll cut it up into pieces, and I'll show you where to go from there. You see me walking on top of this snow, and uh, like it's all good, but every now and then, you get one of these post holes going on, and it's not fun. It's like a jarring, uh, I can't even do it. <laughs> I guess uh, only in the sun, let's try. Okay, whatever. Okay, so you can see what I'm gonna do here. Where is my head? I'm going to cut these into two each. I'll probably need some more, lay them across, and then that's gonna give me an extra headroom. You know what I mean? So as opposed to a small stick, just leaning little ones across, I'm not gonna get any extra headroom there. I'm getting like four inches or something extra, which is uh, gonna be helpful in all honesty. So I just wanna make sure that if I cut them in half, it's going to be long enough. So I cut that, there it's fine. And my uh, silky gum boy, the old trusty. And this wood is pretty uh, decayed, so it's not going to be that big a deal to cut through it. Nice. So, Nice. And then, I'll go on there. Yeah, this will work. Well, update, I got the four logs in and four is all it's gonna take because this is just my entrance and I don't need to be covered there. I don't want it covered there so I can get in. My head will be between these two logs and now it's time to put the bows on. I kept the big long ones for the top. I didn't want them on my uh, bed anyways because they're pokey. I don't want to sleep on pokey things, you know? First world problems, boys and girls. And this is just gonna be a matter of laying them on. It's not gonna, it's not gonna rain and uh, it's not gonna snow through them. So it doesn't matter if it's flat is what I'm getting at. 
We're expecting negative 11 or negative 12 tonight, so everything will be good. So I'm putting this grabber blanket in first. This is not, this is not that easy. So, my gear bomb exploded. I got my sleeping bag out in the sun, trying to dry off a little bit of the condensation that I had. But it's not too bad, so I'm gonna go put it in the shelter over there. All right, boys and girls, shelter's done. I'm gonna attempt to climb in there. So, after I crawl in, I'm gonna have everything that I need for the night, or that I may want for the night, here in this duffel bag. I'm gonna put the duffel bag at the entrance. My duffel bag here. Prop up my duffel bag there. Have a nice little door slash wind block. Not that I need it. Yeah. Not too shabby, guys. Oh, can't forget the old trusty pillar. Bam. I thought it might be kind of cool to go around and check out the other guys' shelters. Let's go do that. How's it coming along? Nice, a little super shelter action going. Um, so I've built a uh, small long fire, a bit of an oxymoron like jumbo shrimp. So uh, this is the small long fire. Um, the super shelter of the Morris Kohansky design. Uh, the reflective uh, mylar barrier is gonna go in the back. Right. Uh, basic $9 tarp for the main shelter. And uh, polyethylene, uh, clear polyethylene on the front. Uh, under pads and the U.S. Army three-bag system to uh, try to survive the night. Nice. Everything's good. You are going to be luxury tonight, man. Oh, I know. <laughs> Neil Young here has made a nice, what would you call it, debris slash... Tree. <laughs> debris train. slash tree. There you go. Cabin? Yep, cabin it is. I go on inside and he's got a lot more room than I do in there. It's kind of snow cave-ish in there. Dug it out a bit. Mylar on top, and then got spruce boughs, and he's wrapped tarp on top. This is really cool. That's gonna be a nice warm shelter, and you're gonna have your fire here, you said? Yep, right there. And you're gonna sit here, soak it up. It's gonna be nice. Nice. What do we got here? Another nice lean-to bow bed with two stick, two logs in front, pounded stakes in. Um, Right there. Really impressed with these guys. All these shelters are coming out really awesome. Very comfy. I think mine's the worst. Here we got Barnabas set up. Nice lean-to. SOL bivy kind of thing protection. Looking good. Ooh. Fancy keb. Fancy keb coat. Who do we have here? Is this Mr. Bushcraft Northeast himself? Oh, oh. What's up, guys? Falling over. Check out Barmus channel, Bushcraft Northeast. Very cool channel. These are the remains of our group shelters. The first two nights, we had two super shelters um, parallel to the wind. So one there, one behind me. Humongous fire. Um, but over the course of two nights, it gets that big. So big bow bed on that one. And they had a raised bed with some sizable pieces of wood, actually. They did a really, really good job on it, too. So many shelters. Lots of shelters. Tonight there's lots of shelters. Right. You getting them all? I got them all. So I think the, the award for best shelter goes to Mr. Brad here. This is a pretty fancy Shangri-La. It's got a nice tripod, sturdy, sturdy tripod. Good base for coals, swearing in the background. <laughs> nice big old fire reflector. Like this thing is a tank, man. And a first timer too, so very cool. No cordage, no cordage on the, on the shelter at all. Just uh, propped up on these old sticks. There's, or sorry, uh, limbs. There's some cordage on the tripod and just to hold the fire reflector together, but very, very, very cool. I am jealous. Everybody's done their shelters. We're all kind of hanging out in the communal area. Gonna eat supper, and then after supper, when everybody feels like it, they're gonna retire to their respective shelters, light their long fires. And be alone. Be alone. <laughs> no play on words. 
All right, boys and girls, I'm making my way over to my shelter. Nighttime, we all hung up by the fire communally, and uh, a few hours ago, everybody switched off to their respected shelters, and now I'm off to mine. And there she be. All right, I'm gonna attempt this now. <laughs> get my pee bottle so I don't have to get on my bag. My socks on. Wish me luck, boys and girls. Oh man. Alright guys, not gonna lie. It took the better part of 10 minutes to get in here. <laughs> yeah, it's a cold night, but uh, already laying in the sleeping bag for two minutes. My feet, everything's starting to warm up. So, I'm expecting a good night's sleep. And then it's up and out of here really early in the morning because I got a, like an eight hour drive home. So, I'll get with you in the morning, and uh, wish me luck. Good night. Good morning. Slept great last night, and we got first light here, so it must be around 6 a.m. I'm not too sure. I don't have a watch on. But, uh, yeah, warm night, man. I slept great. The real winner for last night was the <laughs> the pee bottle I brought into bed with me. Because I got up to pee three times last night, and if I had to get out of bed to go do that shimmy out of this tomb... I would not have been a happy camper. Look at you, toasty boy over here, eh? You're just steaming up a storm. Those are frozen stiff. No doubt. I'm just trying to get some mobility in them. How'd you sleep? Like a baby. Yeah? Yeah. Good to hear, man. Everything went good then. I only had to wake up once to restart the fire because I slept too long in there and it was too warm. <laughs> what a bad problem to have. I know. <laughs> Steam nose boots, boy. So, my verdict on the snow trench, it was fine. I think I actually stayed warmer than I, I had the pre previous two nights. I'm not sure what the temperatures got to, but everything's frozen. My water bottle's frozen, my camera's on, uh, I have to keep putting the battery in my pocket and all that stuff, so. It must've got cold, and I stayed warmer than the previous two nights, like I was saying, so. Pretty cool, not convenient to get in or out the way that I did it, and really not, um, probably not needed. But again, a different, uh, just a different kind of thing that I hadn't done before. So I'm gonna end this video. Everybody's been here since Thursday and uh, it's Sunday now and I gotta go. Driving home, I've been driving for, I don't know, a few hours now. It's one o'clock, I left it at about 9.30, so. I had a really good time. Uh, I'm glad those guys came out for the course. Uh, it was a really good course, good, good group of guys and uh, some cold weather. I guess uh, my sleeping shelter, my, my snow trench worked really well because a couple of the other guys said they were cold that night and they said that it got down to about negative 15. And honestly, my sleep system didn't change the whole trip. And on the last night, I was sweating. I had to take off all, everything except for my boxers. I was so hot. So I knew insulation, uh, snow was a good insulator, but I thought because I didn't have snow on the top and a little channel going into it, that it might not be that warm or even give me any warmth, but it did. So that's really cool. I learned something and uh, I'm happy for that. So thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next one. Bye.